G'day guys, this is Tier, and welcome back to another Fallout 76 discussion video and holy fuck am I excited. I am so excited for the future of Fallout 76 right now. The future has never been brighter. So right here in this video I'm going to be discussing exactly what is on your screen right now, what is in front of your faces. I'm going to be discussing the 2021 roadmap in detail and I'm going to be theorizing and speculating exactly what some of the later ones could actually mean for us what they can include, and what we can expect from it. So, if you're interested in seeing all of this and seeing my hot take on all of this stuff, then be sure to stick around to the end of the video to be fully informed. Alright, let's get into it. Alright, so first up, we've got Spring, Locked and Loaded. I've already talked about this sort of stuff and covered all of this in a previous video, so if you want to see that and actually see it firsthand because it was on the PTS, then be sure to check out that video. I've shown in detail how camp slots work, special loadouts, and the new Daily Ops expansion that we're going to be getting from that content update, which will be Update 26, which should be releasing around April, late April, sometime like that. But what I didn't cover in that video is that it is going to introduce crafting sliders, console aim assist, and camp mannequins and power armor displays, which are all very, very handy things to have and very nice quality of life improvements, especially with the crafting sliders. I, for one, could not be more excited for the special loadouts. Like I said, I'm not going to go in detail on all of that stuff as it has been covered to death by many YouTubers, including myself. So, now let's talk about the big stuff. In summer of 2021, we can expect Season 5 to drop, which will introduce Steel Rain. This is going to be the continuation of Steel Dawn, obviously the Brotherhood of Steel storyline that we have been following with Romani, Valdez and Shin. Those three dickheads. <laughs> I'm pretty excited to see where this leads because the end of Steel Dawn left on quite a cliffhanger and honestly it can go anywhere. Like they did say, Bethesda actually said that you do have to make a choice and pick a side. Hopefully that will include a third optional side where you can pick Valdez because honestly I liked that character and I don't know, I feel like she had some good points to make and was kind of a middle ground in the story arc of that whole deal. But what this also says right here on your screen is that in completing Steel Rain, you will be able to explore new locations and earn powerful new rewards. Now that last bit really intrigues me as obviously legendary crafting and legendary power armor are here on this screen. So those are clearly going to be the new powerful rewards that we will be getting. So clearly, obviously, the legendary power armor will be tied into that somehow. I'm going to speculate that right now because it's in the power armored faction. They're going to obviously give you some cool power armor rewards. That's like saying the floor is made out of floor. Obviously, power armor faction will give you the power armor rewards. It's going to be tied in there somehow. But yeah, I want to go in depth on both legendary power armor and legendary crafting because this is massive for the game. This is huge. This is a big, big change to the game, how it functions, and might potentially be a big meta shift. So firstly, let's look into Legendary Power Armor. So as it stands right now, Legendary Power Armor is in the game in a weird hacked format. It do, it's not supposed to be there. It's on PC only. Hackers have introduced them and injected them into the game, so they kind of already exist. But Bethesda are going to take it upon themselves to add Legendary Power Armor into the game as a base, which is going to be kind of insane <laughs> because power armor builds are obviously the most tanky things in the game like like power armor at a base value already gives you an insane damage reduction by a percentage on top of emergency protocols on top of nerd rage on top of dodgy all that sort of stuff you can be insanely powerful with power armor so with the addition of legendaries that begs the question where exactly are they going to head with this sort of feature now obviously the first thing that comes to everyone's minds is let's get a full set of unyielding sentinel AP refresh speed uh, strangler heart power armor. Obviously that would be most people's go-to. Most people that uh, have been playing the game for a long time would want to have that in their arsenal. However, I think it's going to behave a little bit differently and feel free to come back to this video and call me wrong, say I was wrong if you want, but I think it's going to function differently. I think that the legendary power armor is going to actually take from a completely separate list so it won't be vanguards unyielding bolstering won't be sentinel i don't think there'll be assassins i think it's going to take from a completely new list of legendary options specifically crafted 
poor pair armor. Now, I don't know what they could be. We can sit here and theorize all day what they could do for the game, but honestly, I think that they're going to create legendary effects specifically for pair armor. Stuff that will specifically, you know, bolster that build and that playstyle in particular. Now, I don't know how they're going to do it. I could be completely wrong. But in my mind, it just doesn't make sense for them to just allow all of the already really powerful legendary armors that is already on regular armor to also be applicable to pair armor. It just doesn't make sense in my mind, and for the sake of balance, it, it doesn't look like that that should be happening, <laughs> to be honest. Especially in the context of PvP, I imagine having Assassin Sentinel powered sets of armor will drastically change the meta for that. But yeah, I digress. I think that it is going to be completely different to what everyone's thinking. I could be wrong, it could just be the same old, same old, but on pair armor, making everything really powerful. Or, or it could be something completely different from that again. It could just be, hey, you completed Steel Rain, here's a legendary suit of pair armor with only one star. This is all you're getting. This is the legendary pair armor. It could, it could be that. It could be a a gift type thing like how we have the um those one star rewards from completing the enclave missions we had the bunker buster that legendary missile launcher that gave you 20 percent more damage we had the last bastion which gave you five percent more accuracy which was a scout chest piece it could be a deal like that where they just give you you know a one star legendary set of pair armor hey thanks for playing our dlc could be something like that but those three options right there seem like the most likely the most plausible in my opinion. But let me know what you think about Legendary Pair Armor and how they're going to implement it down in the comments below. I would love to hear your theories and speculation on how this is actually going to work. But moving aside from that into the other one right here, Legendary Crafting. Now this has me so excited. I cannot believe this is finally fucking happening. Now, this can be interpreted a few ways. From the original text that Bethesda themselves put up on their website on the Inside the Vault article. They said, craft specific legendary items using legendary modules. Tailor your build to perfect your playstyle. Now this sounds a lot like they are going to be finally taking the Elder Scrolls Online approach to legendary equipment and weapons. If you don't know how it works on ESO, basically they have legendary things on ESO, it's just got a different name and a different feel and a different way it functions. They're basically legendaries, but in ESO you can craft them exactly how you want. You can craft a sword, a axe, a armor set completely from scratch from the smithing table, and you can have it be imbued with whatever magical enchantment you want, and basically enchantments in that game are legendaries in this game. Same thing, different name, like I said before. So yeah, ESO lets you craft exactly, explicitly, in detail, what you want for your character without restriction. The only thing, the only trade-off, is that you have to grind for the materials to craft it. And I think that is exactly what Bethesda are doing here in this game right here, right now, with the legendary crafting system. I think this will overhaul and encompass the entirety of what we are able to do right now entirely. I think that we will be able to craft entirely whatever we want. If you want a bloodied faster fire at less bats cost the fixer rifle, you can craft that motherfucker at a workbench. If you want a full set of unyielding sentinel AP fucking combat armor, you can craft it. If you want a full set of vanguards AP sentinel, you can craft it. If you want so on and so forth, you can craft it. And I say that it is this so wholeheartedly because there is no other way that this text can be interpreted. Like, think about it. Craft specific legendary items using legendary modules, and then it says tailor your build to perfect your playstyle. That sounds to me a lot like the ESO system. And the way I actually envision them doing this is you have to know the plan, first of all. The plan for the weapon, the armor. It can be... Anything that was in the base game, anything that is a Wastelander's weapon, anything that is a Steel Dawn weapon or armor piece, so on and so forth. If you know the plan to that, then you can spend your legendary modules and maybe some other materials that is rare that is going to be introduced, and you can craft exactly what you want. Now this may even extend over to the legendary power armor system that is getting introduced, and 
you may be able to craft a legendary power armor. That's a fourth option that I didn't consider beforehand. So that is exactly how I envision this getting implemented. If I am horrifically wrong and it is not like that, I'm going to be head over heels disappointed and that will be a huge missed opportunity. Now the other ways that it could work besides what I just mentioned and what I'm honestly 100% hoping for, seriously, I fucking hope it is what I just said <laughs> because that would be amazing. But anyway, if it's not that, the only other plausible explanation could be that everything in the game is just going to get the Wastelanders treatment. And if you don't know what I mean by that, basically weapons and armor that were introduced in the Wastelanders expansion, you could just straight up craft them and they would be legendary. It, it would be randomized to be one star, two star, three star and have any one of those uh, legendary roles in the three prefixes of the stars. It was just completely random. You could craft a Secret Service chest piece and it could be an unyielding Sentinel's AP like you'd hope for, or it could be a Nocturnal's one star. <laughs> Shit like that. So those are the only two plausible explanations. It's either going to be incredibly intuitive and like it says, tailor your build to perfect your playstyle and craft specific legendary items using legendary models. It's either going to be like that or the Wastelanders treatment, which honestly, I'm okay with both. Both are good. Both are a step in the right fucking direction, but I hope to God that it is the first option because that is, that would be such an amazing system to implement into this game. It would eliminate so much player frustration and be a huge, absolutely monumental, monolithic improvement on the game's crap absolute fucking dog shit RNG system. And I say that from the bottom of my heart, the RNG system in this game at the moment is utter fucking dog shit. There's like, I think I read somewhere that there's like a 0, 0.000, maybe one more zero, 9% chance that you would get a full set of uh, legendary gear that you're looking for out of the new daily ops system. So <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I don't fucking fancy grinding that much for a specific set of armor. But besides that, we also have Season 5 being introduced right here as well. It is going to be called Escape from the 42nd Century. I'm not sure about what this is going to be about. Obviously, it's going to be a darker theme. It's got the skull there, Escape from 42nd Century. Not sure what that's referencing, but it seems like it's going to be a darker theme overall. And I'm overall looking forward to it because Hey, I actually like the seasons. <laughs> they get a lot of shit, but I like doing the seasons and I like grinding them out to completion. But also in talking about that, it seems like we are going to be getting for the first time seasons unlimited ranks. If you don't know what that means, basically, if you reach rank 100 in a season, from now on, all future seasons, you'll be able to continue ranking up and just get bonuses. Be that atoms, caps, hopefully perk coins, maybe? but you'll get some form of currency if you continue to rank up past the 100 threshold. All right, and anyway, now we're going to be moving on to the fall. This is going to be where season six comes into play, which we know absolutely nothing about at the moment. But what we do know is that there is going to be another Daily Ops expansion, Daily Ops expansion two, as you can see right there. But we can theorize and speculate that it will obviously bring new locations, it'll bring new enemies to fight in Daily Ops, and it'll bring new mutation combinations, which is always welcome. I love the Daily Ops actual modes, they're fun, they're a lot of fun, and I like doing them. It's just that the actual reward lists are so diluted and dog shit and need changing. Anyway, what is also happening here in the Season 6 Fall portion of the roadmap is Worlds Are Changing. Stay tuned later this year for the next evolution of Private Worlds. Now, if you've been keeping up to date with the data miners and what they've been uncovering in the game files, or if you've been watching In of Survivalist, she's been covering this quite a bit, you would know that there are files in the game for custom game modes, and it is through a system called Athena. Basically, treat it like a Halo custom match. You would set up the settings, whatever they may entail, we have no idea, but Custom settings for a custom world, for a custom experience, that is what this is going to be. I do not foresee it will be anything to do with modding. If it was, it would clearly say that since that is something the community is head over heels begging for. So if it would be something big like modding, it would say it right here and there. I, if I'm wrong about that, then cool. 
you know, awesome. I like the idea of bringing mods into this. I hope they implement it properly. But this right here is just going to be custom game modes and further pushing the private world system, which if you don't know how to acquire that, it is acquirable through the Fallout first, which you have to pay for. So basically this is just Bethesda paying dividends and giving what they should have given at the start to all of the Fallout first members, giving them some good content, giving them something that they should be proud of to spend their money on, you know, that sort of thing. Personally, I don't really care either way about this introduction of content right here, as that's not something I'm really focused in. I'm more of a builds guy, I'm a damage specialist, that's what I do in this game. I like grinding for that sort of thing, I like making my characters powerful. But yeah, I really couldn't care if I had a private world, unless they have an option slider for turning multiplicative damage on. There's something for you Bethesda, do that. <laughs> Let me turn multiplicative damage back on in the private world and then I'll... I'll be a fan of it. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Alright, and lastly here for winter, the last portion of the 2021 roadmap, we've got Season 7. Stay tuned to learn more, we know absolutely nothing about that at the moment, but what we do know is that this will include Tales from the Stars. Stars have aligned into the wasteland, marvel at the discovery of new legends, and reappearance of an Appalachian myth. Now. Obviously, that will introduce aliens in some way. As we can see down there at the bottom right, it does say invaders from beyond, public challenge and daily ops surprise. No bloody clue what that will entail. The going theory on that in the community right now is that it will be some sort of endgame boss like Earl Williams and the Scorch Beast Queen. I hope it is. The game sorely needs more of those. We need way more endgame bosses to fight and uh, challenge ourselves against, but... I don't foresee that happening because of the wording here. Public challenge and daily ops surprise. It doesn't really ring any bells that would indicate to another raid boss being added. But what it does ring a bell to is that it looks like it will be another public event, maybe like Graham's cookout, stuff like that. And it will just include aliens in some fashion. Now the daily ops surprise, I, I guess we're gonna... We're going to be surprised when it comes out, because no fucking clue. <laughs> anyway, seasonal event, the Ritual. Now, this includes something to do with the Mothman Cultists, which is a faction that has been getting a lot of love and attention throughout the community since its inception. People love this clan, and personally, I don't see why. <laughs> They're just a bunch of weirdos worshipping a moth. But anyway, it's another seasonal event, which I'm happy about. I'm sick to death of getting repeats of goddamn Fashion Not Day. I... I hope I never see Fashion Not Day again in this game. We have gotten it like eight times. How, how many times has it actually been? It feels like eight. It feels like 20. <laughs> anyway, we get that way too often, so it's nice to introduce another seasonal event to occupy us when there is a content drought. I like seasonal events. I just don't like them when they're out of season and being introduced way too often. Moving on from events and stuff like that though, we will be seeing the introduction of Camp Pets down there as you see at the very bottom of that. We have no idea how this is going to be introduced, if they will be following us or anything like that. I think that they're just going to be stationary at our camps, similar to how our allies are. And if that's the case then I'm okay with that, it'll be nice to have like a dog or a cat or something like that. Maybe they'll go crazy and let us have like Deathclaw pets and shit like that. That would be pretty cool. Anyways, finally we are going to be talking about the last bit of the 2021 roadmap. This is going to be 4 star legendaries and this is kind of worrisome. It's going to vastly make all of our previous gear, all our 3 star weapons and armor, all of the stuff we've worked tirelessly to collect obsolete. If they implement it wrong. Now there are multiple ways that they could implement it wrong and there are multiple ways they could implement it right. Now one of the main ways, the one of the main ways people actually want this to be implemented is for it to go hand in hand with the legendary crafting system, preferably in the way I described beforehand, and if that is the case, then we simply will just be able to craft 4 star weapons and armors, just like that. Simple and easy, we get to choose exactly what we want for our first, second, third and fourth star. We pick everything, there's no rolling of the dice, we just choose what we want. Now that is a good way that this could be implemented. But in addition to that, there is another way that is a little bit different. Basically, in addition to that, we should be allowed to upgrade our three star armor and weapons to then include a fourth star of our choice 
or it could be a random roll of the dice, I hope it's not, but if we are simply allowed to upgrade our three star weapons and armors to be a four star, then that'll just solve all the problems and there won't be any issues with this implementation. Honestly, I doubt Bethesda is going to implement something that completely invalues 100% of their player base's inventory and collection because that would piss off a lot of people, and rightfully so, because no one wants to be made to feel like all of their grinding for the past two and a bit years is for nothing. Because obviously, people like myself and many others out there have collected a vast amount of powerful and collectible, I guess, weapons and armor sets, and for them to be made obsolete and undesirable and invaluable because of the addition of the fourth legendary star would be a bit of a shit move on Bethesda's part, so... So yeah, let's just hope that it does not get added into the game in a bad way. Those are two very good ways that this could be implemented. Hopefully it's one of them, or both of them. That would be awesome. Anyways. But yeah, anyway guys, this is just my speculation. Bethesda themselves will be doing a developer AMA on the 23rd of March at 11.30am Eastern Standard Time. So if you do want to participate in that and ask them questions and bookmark that in your calendar, set an alarm or whatever, I personally will be there to try and ask questions and I'll be getting their answers on a few things and I'll be covering what they say in another video. So yeah, let's look forward to that. So yeah, overall I am looking forward to this. This is amazing. The future of Fallout 76 has never been brighter. Like I said at the start of the video, we have got so many nice and just awesome additions to the game coming forward. Camp slots, special loadouts, daily ops expansions 1 and 2, hopefully legendary crafting which is a big, big thing. You guys are kind of underestimating how big legendary crafting in this game could be. Second to that we've got legendary pair armor introduced into the game, not sure how that's going to actually function, there's a bit of a debate on whether that's a good or bad thing for the game. Personally, we'll wait and see, I'm on the fence about that one, we'll wait and see. But aside from that, we've got a continuation onto the actual story content in Steel Rain. This will be the last bit of story-driven content that will be added into the game for the foreseeable future. Obviously, there's nothing else on this roadmap indicating anything story-related. It is just, more or less, improvements in the game. But moving on from there, we've obviously got Seasons 4, 5, 6, and 7 that will come when it's time. We have what appears to be custom worlds that are going to be introduced with custom settings. I'm very excited for that, and then we also have going forward more public events and seasonal events that will be added into the game. We've got 4 star legendaries which is a big, big meta change and meta shift in the respect of if you're like myself or Captain Noob or someone else like that, if you like, if you care about your damage output and you care about being the best you possibly can in this game, that's a big change and uh, we'll see how it pans out. But yeah, aside from that, we've got little things like camp pets, crafting sliders, console aim assist, and mannequins, and pair armor displays. Obviously, there's going to be a ton of smaller things that go unnoticed and go unmentioned in all of these updates, and I am supremely looking forward to finding out exactly what those are, because with all of these updates, there is always, always going to be balance changes and bug fixes, and you know me, I always harp on Bethesda to fix the fucking bugs, because... <laughs> There's still a lot of them, and there's a lot that needs fixing, but I digress. This is an overall amazing roadmap, probably the best one they've ever released. I'm supremely looking forward to it, and I hope all of you guys are as well. If you're not, I'd love to know why, and I guess just regardless, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this, so be sure to leave that down in the comments below. But yeah, besides from that, that's going to do it for me. A massive shout out to all my current channel members and Patreons. Thank you all so much for your continued support on the channel. A friendly reminder to follow my social medias in the description below and be sure to subscribe and like the video if you did enjoy. I've been Tia and I'll catch us in the next one. Welcome to Valhalla.